All right, so what if I told you that this was computer graphics? Some of you might say, wow, that's amazing. And some of you might say, Dave, that's rubbish. You've obviously just filmed your desk. Okay, so what if I showed you some proof that it was actually 3D graphics? Here's the wireframe animation showing all my models and the exact same camera movement in Blender. So what do you think now? Is it real video? Is it computer graphics? Well, let's just park that for a second because I need to explain something to you. In my last YouTube video, I showed you this scene from an artist called Rayan Zomorodi. He posted this to Reddit, and when you're posting 3D graphics, it's standard practice to post some proof to go along with it that it is actually 3D graphics. So he later posted this wireframe animation showing the same scene with the exact same camera movements. So reading through the comments on my last video, a load of them basically said, wow, that's incredible, cracking job. And then there were a few comments that really caught my eye. Get this, there were some people who were so convinced that it was actually real footage that he'd filmed with his phone and not something he'd created in 3D. They suggested that it was easier to fake the 3D supporting stuff, so the wireframe animation that he showed that matches the camera, rather than actually create the scene in 3D because it would take much less work. And that idea really caught my attention and that's basically what this video is about. So yeah, off the back of that, the footage that I showed you right at the start of this video was something that I just filmed on my camera. And we're gonna use that as the basis to see if we can reverse engineer it and build a little simple 3D scene to use as proof that it's computer graphics. Does that make sense? Have I explained that well enough? So I will just state at this point, I'm not throwing any doubt onto Rayan and his amazing work. So what do we actually need to do in order to pull this off. Well, first of all, we need to basically recreate this scene of my desk in 3D so we could look at it from any angle on the computer. Now, some of the people in the comments on my last video stated that very easily you could use AI to turn video into 3D models. So that's where I started. I took and uploaded a longer video looking all around my desk from different angles to a website called Luma AI. So what Luma AI does is you give it a series of photos or videos and it uses clever maths and AI to extract a 3D scene from a video. It works out where everything goes. And what it actually creates is something called a NERF or a neural radiance field, which you can then export as a 3D model. Now, if we look back at Rayan's wireframe, you can see there's a lot of straight lines. Everything looks really solid. Now, the problem with AI that turns video into 3D at the moment is the resolution isn't that great. So where you should have like straight lines as if you just use a cuboid to draw a monitor, everything's built up from what basically called point clouds and it looks a bit blotchy and organic. So I tried a few times with this, again, with different angles and longer videos, but I couldn't get anything out of it with a high enough resolution that made it look like it was actually modeled by a person. Big splotchy 3D models are a huge giveaway that something wasn't modeled by a person. Like why would I model lumps into my monitor? So with my plan of AI modeling this for me out the window, I realized I'm gonna have to model it myself using the free 3D program Blender, the same one Rayan used to render his scene. Now, I'm not a 3D artist. I, I don't know how to model things that look good in Blender. So I headed over to a website called Sketchfab, which lets you download models that other people have made. Now, the models weren't exact. I had to spend an embarrassing amount of time learning how to edit them to make them look more like the ones that are actually on my desk. And I had to model the cables from the keyboard and the mouse from scratch. And again, that took more time than I care to admit. I also modeled my desk and the mesh bit that runs along the back. So now we've got a kind of basic 3D representation of the stuff that is on my desk in the video. So now the next thing we need to do is get my actual physical camera motion into the 3D scene in Blender so we can match it to the real world. Now, Rayan had an actual app on his phone that recorded the phone's movements in 3D space, and then he could just import those movements straight into Blender, and then the virtual camera would follow the same path. Now, because I filmed this on my big chunky DLSR camera, I couldn't install any apps on it to track the movement. And at the time I hadn't thought about strapping my phone to it to record it. So we need to find another way to get the movement out of the video and into Blender. So luckily for us, there's something built into Blender that can do exactly this. 
First, we import the video into Blender and then we find some high contrast points in the video and get Blender to track them all the way through the scene. So with a minimum of eight points, it can then do what it calls solving the camera. It'll work out all the movements. So you know how if you're looking out of a moving car window, things that are further away move slower and things that are closer move faster. Well, Blender takes this idea to the max and applies some <laughs> knockers hard maths and works out how everything is moving around in your scene, all the perspectives and things, and works out where the camera is in relation to everything based on pure mathematics. Honestly, it's like magic. Now, as I've said, I'm not a 3D artist. There's probably a much easier way to do this, but I had to line up the model with the camera and scale everything and put it everything exactly in the right place so that when you're looking through the camera, all of them 3D models line up with where things are in the real world. And this took flipping hours. I had to move things around exactly because sometimes it would be in the right place at the start of the video but then at the end it had kind of drifted over there which meant that it was either too far forwards or back or up or down so it took a lot of tweaking. I did it all by eye and it was just trial and error. Like I say there are probably ways to do this <laughs> but I don't know what they are so I did it the poor man's way. <laughs> so at this point this is what we've got and we have the virtual camera moving around inside Blender exactly matching how my camera was moving in real life in the physical world. So let's try and answer the question, can you fake proof that real footage is a computer generated scene? So feel free to disagree, but I think on first glance without any further interrogation, I've basically done what I set out to do. I'd not even entertained the idea of reverse engineering something backwards and faking the proof so it could possibly fool someone out there. So yeah, knowing how skilled and creative a lot of you are out there, I'd say 100% yes, it is possible to fake the proof that real footage is computer graphics. But if the most you're gonna get out of it is a pat on the back from some strangers on the internet, what's the point? <laughs> if someone offers you a job because they're blown away by your 3D skills, you've shot yourself in the foot because you're not gonna be able to deliver. Ultimately, the way to settle an argument on whether something is a 3D render or not is to provide the actual 3D file that anybody can download, load up, hit render, and get the same photorealistic result as in the render that you published. Anyway, that's that. What is going through your head right now? Did I do an interesting job? Did I make a complete hash of it? What would you have done different? How would you have approached it? Let me know your ideas in the comments. Um, boop the like button if you have been entertained. And of course, subscribe for more techie things like this. Bye for now.